Good evening, and welcome to Quorum. I'm Wilson Stribling. Tonight's topic, tourism in Mississippi. Our guests tonight all serve on the tourism committees in either the House or the Senate. Joining us from the Senate Tourism Committee is Chairwoman Lydia Graves Chazanoff. She is a Republican, and her district includes portions of Atala, Carroll, Grenada, LaFleur, Montgomery, and Tallahatchie counties. She has served in the legislature since 2007. Also joining us from the Senate Tourism Committee, Senator John Horn. He is a Democrat, and his district includes parts of Hines and Madison counties. He has served in the legislature since 1993. From the House Tourism Committee is Chairwoman Rita Martinson. She is a Republican, and her district is in Madison County. She has served in the legislature since 1992. Also from the House, Representative Bubba Carpenter. He is a Republican. His district includes parts of Alcorn and Tishomingo counties. He has served in the legislature since 2008. And we thank you all four for joining us this evening. We also want to hear from you, as always, on Quorum. It's your chance to ask questions about our discussion, to join in the discussion. There are several ways to do that. You can call us toll-free, 1-877-405-5247. You can send us an email. The address is quorum at mpbonline.org. Or if you use Twitter, you can use this hashtag, Quorum, Q-U-O-R-U-M. Let's begin our discussion by letting our viewers know just what the tourism committees do. So we'd like to know from uh, each side here what your responsibilities are. And Senator Chazanel, let me start with you. Thank you. Um, well, our tourism committee has been busily um, examining and passing bills out of committee for the consideration of the Senate, and we expect to have some bills coming over from the House mm -hmm. very soon that we will take up and uh, consider in committee and then most likely pass them into the uh, consideration of the Senate. Uh, I have some information that uh, tells a little bit about the types of uh, expenditures that are brought to, to Mississippi's economy by tourists. Are you interested in any of that, or Sir, do you just want to talk about legislation tonight? Well, no, certainly, but, but, but sort of from a more broad perspective, the, the bills that your committee uh, considers are things that presumably would enhance tourism in Absolutely. Mississippi, right? and Draw some, tourists here. And, and, and some, of the, some of the bills that we have also involve um, the gaming industry. Uh, they uh, also have, uh, we've gotten some bills that have come directly to us, but also in Senator Horn's Economic Development Committee mm -hmm. that have to do with alcohol consumption mm -hmm. and, and changing the regulations involving the uh, consumption and sale of alcohol. And we will get to that. That uh, refers to some specific bills, and uh, folks might not realize the connection between alcohol and tourism that, that can be made, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Representative Martinson, tell me a little bit about what, uh, what you all are doing in your committee on the House side. We have um, some bills that we've passed out that enhance the movie industry mm -hmm. business in Mississippi. We're very proud to support the motion picture industry and uh, we encourage all productions to come to Mississippi and one of the things that we've done also is to say that uh, hotels that are in need of renovation can be given an incentive package to renovate those hotels. Hmm. There are a lot of them who are, you know, after they're seven or eight years old, they begin to get run down. And so any of the hotels in the same vicinity sometimes can begin to start looking bedraggled. Mm -hmm. and, and so we wanted to offer an incentive to some of those hotels that would put up as much as $2 million for renovation and 10000 Well, now it's been amended down to 500000 and put 10000 per room um, that they would spend that much on each room, then they would be given a rebate uh, of mm -hmm. some of the sales tax generated mm -hmm. from those rooms for mm -hmm. a certain period of time. And uh, I think that will really help. We, we are very encouraged to, to um, see that that can help the industry to improve itself. Uh, all of these things, um, all taken together with ways and means measures, such as uh, Senator Horn's measure, measures in uh, economic development, go together with tourism in, right. to enhance the whole state's tourism. Well, uh, let's talk about some of this specific legislation, uh, particularly over on the Senate side at the moment. House Bills uh, 506 and 928, both of them would allow some cities to come out from under that law and, uh, and go wet, and they've passed the House. Uh, so the question is, will they make it out of committee and pass the Senate? We had a similar bill in the Senate mm -hmm. uh, that would allow uh, municipalities of 6,000 or a county seat uh, of a county of any size, if they so had 20% of the voters uh, to petition 
uh, for an election, that, that they would be allowed to call an election for the issue so that that municipality within a dry county could then uh, elect to uh, come out from under the dry law. And I believe the stipulation also is in the bill that uh, this could only, this consideration on either, si quest either side of the question to, to remain dry or to go wet could only be brought up every two years. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that we have several pieces of legislation that are, are moving forward. So Senator Horn, how could alcohol legislation like this uh, enhance tourism or economic development? <coughs> since uh, you're, you're chair of the Economic Development Committee on, on the yes. side. Well, I want to back up and, and talk about the broader issue. Uh, we are in the state of Mississippi, uh, a state that has tremendous natural resources, historical resources, cultural resources. And uh, for the first time in our history, we seem to finally get it that we need to be selling and promoting Mississippi as a great place to live and to play, uh, to live, to work, and to play. Uh, and um, uh, we have just recently, in, in the last couple of years, began to look at the assets of our museums, our arts commission, and, and the arts community. Uh, our touristic offerings uh, to, to start to put together a product uh, and the product is Mississippi and, I, and the theme of, of our state now is, is the birthplace of the blues, mm -hmm. the birthplace of America's music uh, and, and to see that, that we're now trying to, to utilize those resources as part of what we call the creative economy is very uh, enlightening and, and very, very gratifying to me. I ran the film commission back uh, in another lifetime. <laughs> I ran the tourism uh, department for the state in another lifetime. And we, we were just beginning to look at those kinds of things as assets to Mississippi that could, that could really promote economic development in our state in a new and exciting way. So, uh, to that end, what, what uh, areas of the state do you think are not, uh, have not been fully explored? You, you mentioned the blues. Uh, civil rights seems to be another, uh, Another potential, um, I guess, mine of of of, uh, of of destinations for folks to to attract them to the state. Well, to our credit, we have have created a blues trail uh -huh. uh, that people from all over the world are coming to follow the, the blues trail. We have hundreds of sites uh, that really establish Mississippi's position as the birthplace of, of America's music. We have a country music trail. When you, when you think about Mississippi, you got to talk about our music. We gave the, the world, we gave America's music. We gave them country, we gave them blues, we gave them rock and roll uh, with Elvis. Uh, we gave them, uh, to a great extent, uh, some important aspects of jazz music. And, and so we're using the, those elements now. But we also are, are able to look at our Civil War history. Mm. And, and people come who, who are buffs of, of the Civil War to, to explore that history. When I was tourism director, we, we did some research and found that the number one thing that people like to do besides shopping <laughs> is to explore and, and a place's a history yes, and culture. So, so for us to now uh, follow up with the Civil War trail, the Civil War emphasis, a uh, Civil Rights Trail, which is it's just in its burgeoning stages. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. named five sites, uh, and there are about 30 some odd sites that, that are going to be named. All of that becomes part of the mix that makes us Mississippi, and that makes us very attractive to other parts of, of the country, other parts of the world to come and explore. Well, back to the, uh, to the question of, uh, of alcohol legislation. Uh, uh, Representative Carpenter, what, uh, what, what's the connection between uh, letting an area go wet and improving the economy and improving tourism? Uh, Wilson, as you know, we're, we're considered the Bible Belt uh, in the South. Uh, when we have tourists from up north and other parts of the country, uh, they like to have a glass of wine with dinner. Um, uh, in my part of the country, the lake, the, the fishing, the, the, the atmosphere up there of the Pickwick Lake. Uh, mm -hmm. People cannot fathom that uh, you can't get buy a beer, you know, when you go on the lake because I live in a dry county. Uh, in Not the air necessarily get a beer and drive the boat. But that's that right. That that's exactly happened. right. But Alcorn County is wet for beer in the city limits only. Mm -hmm. well, this piece of legislation would allow Alcorn County to come out from under the dry law and have drink uh, liquor by the drink in the hotels and restaurants. We're at a crossroads, Highway 72 and Highway 45 that goes into Tennessee. 
you're looking at, the mayor tells me they're sitting on four potential restaurants, a Chili's, a Logan's, maybe a, uh, a, a, uh, uh, a seafood restaurant to come mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And those, those, that industry makes a lot of their money off of their, their bars. Mm -hmm. Their food is not their, their big seller, it's their, their liquor. So we're in proximity of an hour from Memphis, so those folks would come over to see the Civil War tours, uh, fish in the lake, they would, they would like to have a drink. So this is a piece of legislation I think would, would uh, benefit Alcorn County in that respect for tourism. Uh, is, is there much opposition to something like this? I mean, it seems when you, when you bring up uh, uh, alcohol in Mississippi, a lot of times you have, you have strong opinions on, on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think this issue doesn't necessarily deal with alcohol as much as it does with the economic devel development issue. And we did have, uh, I think, 13 votes against uh, mm -hmm. when, our, when we brought those, the, the we bills forward. We had a few more. <laughs> yeah. no, well, you have yeah. a bigger body. Yeah, have you know, you have 122 body. people. But <laughs> we, we had, I believe, 13 votes against. And, you know, I spoke with the people who voted against it. And they said, look, it's not about tourism. We're not against it. It's just that we represent... Yeah people that we feel sure. would be very upset if we voted in favor of any alcohol bill, and I certainly respect them for that. But as uh, uh, Representative Carpenter just said, the, the profit margin in the restaurant business is very thin. A lot of restaurants rely on the sale of beverage uh, to increase their profit margin. And, and if you go into any restaurants here in Jackson, you know, a glass of wine off of the, by the by the glass uh, list is going to be eight, nine, ten dollars, sure. and uh, restaurants want to capture that market. They want to capture that market share, and I can't blame them. Flowood is an example of a community that mm -hmm. came out from under the dry law, so that they could get a higher quality restaurant. And you can't blame people who are trying to get tourism dollars for wanting to get the best types white tablecloth restaurants that they can, and to uh, in to attract those high quality restaurants for the area. So that's and, what I see it as an economic Russell, development. If I might issue. Add, um, this is just progressing the democratic process. We're not mandating anything. No. These folks have the right to vote. Right. And, and if the people who oppose it, uh, they have the right to get out and vote against it. Mm -hmm. And, and the winner wins, you know. Because um, it has to cross several hurdles. You, you have you've got to, to authorize the, them to do this with the bill, mm -hmm. and then, uh, the, the, then the the population has to has, has to, to vote mm -hmm. to even have mm -hmm. the election. Right. That's and correct. We You're, also have a bill that uh, deals with tasting, yes. tasting bills mm -hmm. that are very interesting. You know, we have some craft beer, um, the people who mm -hmm. who produce craft beer, and they want to have the ability to let tourists come in or anybody come in and taste some of these beers with different flavors. Mm -hmm that, um, you know, people have never been exposed to. Some people just have, they are really desirous of trying all the different flavors that people can create. I was going to ask you about that. That's one of our yeah. topics here. That's uh, House Bill uh, 1019 that would run right. around. We had a Senate companion to that mm -hmm. as well. But, but uh, what, what we have is a burgeoning uh, craft yes. bre brewing market mm -hmm. in Mississippi mm -hmm. in, the, in terms of the manufacture of craft beers. It's not a, a, a major production. The, the, the folks who are, there's only one manufacturer in Mississippi. They brew only 13,000 13, uh, gallons of, of, of beer uh, per, uh, or barrels of beer barrels per, per, per year. Uh, but if we are able to change a couple of laws, if we uh, uh, are able to change the law that, that will allow people to come to the manufacturer, the place where it's manufactured. And people who, who, who are really into connoisseur beer mm -hmm. often like to go to the place mm -hmm. where their favorite beer is manufactured mm -hmm. and be able to taste the beer on the premises. State law in Mississippi does not allow for that. We also ha have... I, I think was, there are a lot of people who probably don't realize that. that no, really. no oh, they yeah, don't. Yeah. And there's yeah. another brewery that's um, about that's to... That's being contemplated, mm -hmm. right, right, uh, yes, right, right here in, in the metro that. area. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so um, we, you're talking about the creation of jobs. Uh, this, this same manufacturer down in South Mississippi uh, has an opportunity to go from 13,000 barrels to 50,000 barrels by 2015. Uh, but they can only do that if if we loosen up our laws about the manufacture of beer to, to allow a, a content of higher than 5% by weight to be manufactured, not for necessarily consumption in Mississippi, but for consumption mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to, to clients that, that they would do contracts with to manufacture the beer and sell it outside the state of Mississippi. 
Okay, so uh, now that's another, so we're talking about another law. You've got the one that would allow samples, mm -hmm. yes. and then we've got one that would let you, uh, let breweries put a higher percentage, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people are confused by that, that if, mm -hmm. we, if we pass a law that says we can uh, up the percentage of alcohol in a beer from five to eight percent, you're just trying to make stronger beer, and all of the beer that's sold in Mississippi will suddenly rise no. to oh, eight no. percent, but no, that's no, not how it works, not. right? No, no, no. no it's, it's not. not the way it works. Your um, anheuser Bushes, your, uh, your uh, major big companies mm -hmm. would still be restricted to the mm -hmm. law of the volume by weight. This would allow the craft beers to go from their limit of five to eight percent to compete with other markets of craft beers. And, and you're really only, only talking about um, bringing in an, an additional 16 brands of beer into the state, and all the beer that is currently available in Mississippi would remain at the same alcohol by weight. So this would allow new uh, folks who can't sell, or companies that can't sell their mm -hmm. product here now, this would enable them That's to correct. do so. That's correct. Well, and I think it needs to be pointed out that the casino industry in Mississippi, the, the people who actually go to the casinos, 78% of the people who are patrons of the gaming industry are from out of state. Mm -hmm. From out of state. That is their, their major source of revenue and they're, they're wanting to be able to offer to their patrons, the people who come and, and uh, stay in their hotels, eat in their restaurants, uh, enjoy spirits in their bars, they want to be able to offer these people what they can get in their home states. And you can't blame the casinos in Mississippi for wanting to be co competitive as far as the food and beverage service with, with other states. What about the folks who say this is a battle between alcohol and the almighty dollar? That this we're we're, we're uh, that alcohol is 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 a bad thing, and that we shouldn't compromise anything just to uh, increase revenue, to, whether it's with, through tourism or, or whatever. Well, the same people that say that need to know that we have. Uh, I'm trying to see how much money was brought into the general fund. It was 400 and some odd million dollars that were brought into the uh, tourism. Fund. I mean, uh, the tax. Through, through tax, alcohol? Tax, no, just through the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And and this is just one component of mm -hmm. tourism, of course. There are many other components of tourism. But we want to be competitive with our sister states. It's just like the film industry that John was talking mm -hmm. about earlier and Rita was talking about earlier. We are trying to be competitive with places like. Georgia, Louisiana. Tennessee, Louisiana. Oh boy, they're just going <laughs> gangbusters. Louisiana, Louisiana. Had, for instance, brought in eight, over eight hundred million dollars last year of free money. That's new money to the state of Louisiana in and in the film industry alone. Mm -hmm. We want to be competitive and get some of that t same type production mm -hmm. in yeah. Mississippi. We have our own sound mm -hmm. stages. We, the Mississippi film industry has a sound stage in Canton, mm -hmm. and we have other sound stages that are being created throughout the state. Greenville is is uh, putting one together. We are, we are putting together, and what we also want is the workforce that is trained to be able to work on the film, mm. in, in the film industry. We, and we have a bill that speaks to that, mm -hmm. uh, that would uh, create, from the, in the Senate bill, uh, three sites in, in the Workforce Investment Act uh, where training for persons interested in, in being trained and in developing skills for film production can go uh, in three different locations geographically spread out around the state. Mm -hmm. I think what we're, we're talking about here is we're trying to create the state of Mississippi as a destination. Mm -hmm. right. A destination, whether it's about gaming, whether it's about uh, uh, non-consumptive tours, hunting, uh, uh, sightseeing, bird watching, uh, that tours. sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, agribusiness tours, whether it's about the music, whether it's about our literature, mm -hmm. whether it's about, about um, uh, our history, uh, be it uh, a history of 200 years ago, 100 years ago, 50 years ago. How do we create that as a product? Because mm -hmm. people are interested in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that, that's the thing about that, that, that we, we here in Mississippi fail to understand. A lot of people are really fascinated by this place because of its contrast and inconsistencies, because of its pain and pleasure, because of, of um, uh, of all the creativity that's born out of this little little place. We're about to build a Grammy Museum the Grammy in Mississippi. Museum. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is the, only the second uh, uh, Grammy Museum in the United okay. States outside of the one in, in Los Angeles. And guess what? It's because Mississippi has contributed so much to the world of, of music. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine did a survey uh, and a listing of the top 100 most influential artists in the country. <coughs> Ten of them came from Mississippi. Wow. We've got one competing tonight. 
That's right. She does. On, yes. uh, on, on the um, American, American Idol. That's right. Yeah. From With her uh, family with Beatty Street Grocery. We right wish, here them, wish her well. Uh, we have a caller on the line who'd like to ask a question of, uh, of you folks. Uh, it's, his name is James, calling from Iuka. James, go ahead with your, uh, your question, please. Yes. Does this field affect just in, uh, Iuka, or, or does it just affect Corinth? And the second question is, will they have, be able to have liquor stores in Iuka or Corinth? Thank you. I believe he's referring to the, the alcohol bill. Uh, yes. Thank you, James, for the calls. The bill actually reads, uh, there's two bills alive. One is a threshold of 5,000 people. The other is 6,000 people. Mm -hmm. And that would only be for municipalities of that size. And the bill in the House requires only liquor by the drink in hotels and restaurants. Uh, no, it would not apply to any part of Iuka or Tishomingo County due to the size of the municipalities. The only uh, municipality in our district, or my district, that would uh, would be uh, a receptive to this would be Corinth, which they have about 19,000 folks in the in the corporation limits there. And, and it would not it would not permit the the opening of liquor stores. That's right. Like he asked. Yeah. This, 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 be... this bill would per, would not permit the opening of liquor stores only by the glass. Well, and and on the Senate version of that bill, it was there was a floor amendment offered that would leave it up to the the local unit of government as to how it would be offered, whether liquor stores or by the glass or, or and, whatever. And Wilson would like to say this. Um, I've been here. These guys have been here a lot longer than I, but. Uh, in the past five years, we've had numerous cities come in wanting resort mm -hmm. status, resort status. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't be deciding what goes on in Calhoun City. I shouldn't be deciding what goes in Natchez. With this puts it back on the local alderman or city councilman. Mm -hmm. they re there is a resolution. Uh, they present a resolution. They bring a petition in of 20% of the voters. They allow them to have the election. And at that time, the democratic process works. And, and explain what resort status is. Okay, resort status would be given by the legislator in the past for an area that fit a description. For instance, uh, X amount of miles from the water, or so mm -hmm. many. Uh, one is the uh, cane break in Hattiesburg. They became uh, a resort status, which allowed that particular area of the state to serve liquor or alcohol only in a dry in a dry county. They would become a resort status out in the county. Like the airport. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, we, we have we have several watering holes, if you yeah. will, scattered around. Mm -hmm. And this puts it in the hands of the local, local citizens. Mm -hmm. citizens. They're the ones who have to get the petition together. They're the ones who have to present the position, petition uh, with the 20% of the certified electors. And it be then becomes a matter for the local people. Why should we decide what is a resort or what is appropriate for another area of the state that, w that we don't represent. Because how are resort statuses uh, determined now? Does the legislature uh, do that? Uh, yes, yes. case by case, 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 case. case. But, but the, the state tax commission, mm -hmm. the, the Department of Revenue also has some latitude in the determination of, of, of resorts. But who brings it, it to, to those entities? Who brings the, it to you the all? Local unit, well, the, the, local, lo, the local unit of government. Okay. So it's not a, the people necessarily. No, no. 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 And, and in Jackson, for example, we have resort status in the Ferris Street Historic mm -hmm. District. Uh, if we ever get that off the ground, please, <laughs> Jesus, I, I, I hope I don't get any calls behind that statement just now. But, but um, uh, in a, a wet county, a wet, wet a city, for example, like Jackson, you still have certain hours that you have to close. If you have resort status, then you're able to, to relax those hours so that tourists who are coming in from uh, outside the, the, the state who are coming for a convention and want to go down to an entertainment district will be able to, to in, uh, enjoy those clubs and, and, and night spots being open a little longer mm -hmm. than they typically would be even in a, a city such as Jackson. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's move on now to uh, another bill that's uh, pending in the House Tourism Committee. It's Senate Bill 2892. It would help develop a new Rails to Trails Recreational District in Pontotoc County. Uh, and we hear about rails to trails in, in more and more areas of the state where you take abandoned railroad mm -hmm. beds mm -hmm. uh, and turn them into something, something that can perhaps promote tourism or, or economic development even. Uh, what do you know about this, uh, this initiative here and, and how is something like this beneficial to the state? Well, I think you'll have to answer that for me because we have not looked at that bill yet. Mm -hmm. It's just been assigned to us. Well, there are a number of rails to trails that have been developed, as you say, over abandoned railroad mm -hmm. properties. And um, the one that I think is uh, probably up and running the best is the Longleaf mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. near yes, Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
I understand now that a lot of people come in to work on their bicycles and, and are, you know, they're using it for exercise. And of course, we all need to be healthier and, and exercise or walk more. And it, it has been a uh, well utilized um, space for what was an abandoned railroad. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's some other people in different parts of the state that are catching on to that, and that's what they would like to see. What can the legislature, though, do to promote something like that? Well, I think it has to go through public property. It does also, have to go so to public properties uh -huh. first, and yeah. then it comes to our Then it'll tourism. come to tourism. Uh -huh. But I think so. they have to deed the, the land over, it's as I understand GM &O. it. Because the railroad uh -huh. companies the own they all have, of they have, the railroad. Right. Yeah. Long sliver uh -huh. of property, essentially. Yeah. And, and usually the, they'll, they'll just pull up whatever usable parts they can from the railroad. They and salvage just, companies. Yeah, yeah they benefit. will. And there'll be this abandoned stretch. So if they're willing to deed it over to a community, that's one way that communities can work together uh, from the you know from those one small town to another small town to connect them and it, it and there are a lot of people mm -hmm. if I drive up and down Highway 55 I see people with bicycles strapped to the top of their cars mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. take their bicycles with them when they go so mm -hmm. that uh, when they reach their destination they can get some healthy exercise and maybe see more of the uh, area see, you know, well a lot of the, these abandoned train tracks are, are no longer in use they usually go through some really beautiful country. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're on flat beds, so it's good for bikes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like there are niche markets for Civil War buffs or Civil Rights buffs, or there, there are a lot of bikers out there, uh, folks who like to ride, motor, uh, ride bicycles and, and do it in a, a really scenic trail setting. In Jackson, for example, we're doing a rails to trails program uh, that uh, is involving some of our abandoned railroad tracks, and, but ultimately we're going to connect it to Ridgeland's trail. Well, I hope so, to, because to flow our Ridgeland Rankin Bike trail. trail is fantastic. It's, it's really fantastic, mm -hmm. but, but th th there'll be a, a way for uh, th these avid bikers to be able to go throughout the three counties mm -hmm. and, and never have to cross a car. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's, so there's a safety issue there because there, there are you know, a lot of people who drive exactly. motor vehicles that don't really respect bikers. Mm -hmm. And so they want to be able to enjoy a wonderful setting and also feel safe. You know, in other states, they have levees where they have created bike mm -hmm. trails along the levees. Mm -hmm. I know the Mississippi River in yes. New Orleans mm -hmm. has sure. a wonderful levee mm -hmm. um, system where people ride for miles and miles, and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Something's been brought to my attention that net between Natchez and Vicksburg, I know uh, mm -hmm. Senator Sojourner, who's new to the Senate but has a lot of good ideas, that's one of the things she wants to talk about. So whatever we can do great to idea. capture the attention of tourists, some who may be coming here because they're interested in Civil War battle sites, some who may be coming here because they're interested in Mississippi history, as uh, Senator Horn said, either ancient Mississippi history <laughs> or more current, they have other interests as well. Mm -hmm. And we want to expose them to as many good opportunities for travel in Mississippi as we possibly can. This is the cheapest economic development that one can have. Tourism truly is. People come to see us, they leave money, and they go home. And and you know, it's just somebody, ideal. And you know, the, Russell, we've talked about in past years, um, Wilson. Your return, Wilson, your return on investment. Um, mm -hmm. For every dollar we take in, the number has grew, It's I think it's seven. Uh, it turns over seven, seven times. times. So right. mm -hmm. that, that There's ended. so many great ideas with the Craft mm -hmm. Center. For instance, you know, there are people who go down the Natchez Trace and they're looking for the craft center. They want to, to get off and go visit that craft center just like they do at the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, craft center. So we want to find a way also to get more, a, a little better access from the trace to our beautiful craft center we have in Ridgeland. We've got um, horses. Horses are mm -hmm. a wonderful yes. tourism attraction. We've got so many, the classic, um, on the coast. Yeah, on the, the coast, coast that they and had the just Center recently. Here and in the Jackson uh, has, has brought huge, mm. and people who come to a town with their horses, they oh, nice. they're, and they're buying they're gasoline, they're, they're staying in hotels, they're eating, eating in our restaurants, they they're buying, going to the feed stores. You know, if you have a horse with you, you've got to feed him too. I loved on boots, boots and, and everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so see, that, there are a lot of things that, that everybody that comes to Mississippi brings money. And it brings a, a pet peeve of mine about, I, I, I think it's time for us to do something about the Coliseum. Yes. Absolutely, I really do. I agree I with you. I think that, you know, it, it, it seems like we feel threatened that if we do something, we'll lose Dixie National. I think we'll be able to get oh, all kinds of other Dixie it. Nationals in. But we, we've got a great location here in, in Jackson where people coming from the Gulf Coast uh, who are entertainers. 
uh, headed to Memphis or headed to, to Tupelo or headed to, Na uh, to Nashville or Little Rock. Uh, uh, folks coming from, from Memphis headed down to New Orleans. They come right through here, but they don't so play well. in Jackson. They don't play be because either the size of the facility is too small or the conditions of the facility are unacceptable. Mm -hmm. and, and we've got a tremendous opportunity to, to build a new arena or a new coliseum or whatever you want to call it to, to capture that those. market mm -hmm. and to enhance. Uh, I, I have heard that the Dixie National is, is looking at other, other locations. National Cutting Horse Association may be potentially looking at other locations because we don't, we don't have the amenities, we don't have the, the hotel stock, we don't have the enough quality stalls, of the facility, and enough that. stalls, and we've got to, got to pay attention mm -hmm. to that. To that. Mm -hmm. but, but we haven't made any major improvements to the Coliseum that were substantial in the last 20 years. So, you know, that, that part of, of, of how we put our product together has to be paid attention to. Well, you all seem to be in agreement about that, about that issue with the Coliseum, uh, but where would the money come from to do something? That would be a well, tremendously that's expensive... Well, I, I think it's an a great opportunity for a public-private partnership. Mm -hmm. I think that there is enough private sector interest in trying to put something like this together that we can uh, come up with the, the, the uh, resources yeah, from the private sector. The state has all of that land. It has the, the, the and it has the market right now, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that it's it's a great opportunity to to put it out on, in the open marketplace and see if we have the the kind of developers who are interested in coming in and, and putting a good product together. Well, for, uh, you know, there's a good example with the Superdome in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. They have now it's now the Mercedes Benz. Don't. Private you know, it's a private partnership that, that where they've been able to put the money into the Superdome and, and improve it, vastly improve it. Maybe we could have the Nissan Coliseum. Two we might. The Bank Corps South Center. Yeah. You know, they, they're joint partners oh, I, with Bank Corps South. Yes. Yes. Local, local governmental entities have caught on to the fact that, you know, bring in partners who are winning by having these events in town. So I'm hoping that our city fathers in Jackson will maybe be interested in partnering with some other prospects. I'm sure Senator Horn will bring it to their attention that it's a good idea. <laughs> May I say something about a, a, a timely matter as far as tourism? Sure. That has to do with what's going on right now. You know, we're in the uh, 150th anniversary of the Civil War. It's the sesquicentennial of the American Civil War. <laughs> Lots of people are coming to Mississippi because of the Vicksburg Park, Corinth, Yes. Other other battlefield sites around that the, the Civil War buffs are just huge, mm -hmm. huge students of these battles and things, and they're coming here. So we're trying to capture <coughs> the interest. We have a virtual uh, Civil War trail that people can follow. It's chronological, and it also does as far as you know when the battles took place, where they took place, and the the folks that know a lot about the Civil War will be able to go on to that and follow this trail around. The other thing that's coming up in 2017, which will be here before we know it, mm -hmm. is the happy birthday, Mississippi. She'll be 200, be 200 years old. That's right. So uh, we've, we've got some important, timely things that we're working on. And uh, we have no money, unfortunately, but we're working with a bi uh, Bicentennial Commission and a Susquecentennial Commission trying to uh, develop ways to attract more tourists for these events. Um, I'm hoping that between now and 2017 we can really come up with some good ideas to attract people from all around the country because uh, I know our neighboring state of Tennessee had their, I believe it was their bicentennial celebration a few years back, and they did a Tennessee homecoming. So we need to think of ways mm -hmm. to attract more tourists. And I know the Bright Minds over at the Division of Tourism are working on it. but. Uh, this is a very important time in Mississippi to develop our tourism industry, to use it as an economic development tool, and to make people feel really welcome when they come here. Well, but we also, uh, for 2017 and the bicentennial, just last year passed a $40 million bond issue to deal with, with the um, construction <coughs> and equipping of the Mississippi History Museum mm -hmm. and the Mississippi Civil Rights mm -hmm. Museum. And the expectation is that those two museums, which will be co-located, they'll be side by side, uh, will be ready and open and in time for the, the uh, 2017 celebration. Mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of folks who hope, hope that. You too. know, when Senator Chasnall mentioned homecoming, it brought to mind, do you remember several years ago, you may be the only one, you may remember this too, but Thalia Mara mm -hmm. had a Mississippi homecoming. And um, I don't know if you were aware of that, but it was maybe 10 years mm -hmm. ago. And she got all these people who were very well-known people 
who have moved out oh, of yeah, the state did, yeah. and asked them to come back for mm -hmm. a huge mm -hmm. homecoming. Concert. It was fabulous. She, mm -hmm. of course, a longtime arts patron who lived in the Jackson area, well, the city auditorium she, named yeah. her. She brought uh, one, the, the um, International Ballet Competition, mm -hmm. yes. uh, which takes place in only four places in, in the world. world. And Jackson, Mississippi is one of them. So every four years we have that, that IBC that comes here. And thanks to Thalia Mark. Yeah. Right. To touch back on Senator Chastanel on the 150th uh, anniversary of the Civil War, my area is s concentrated with Civil War. We have the Shiloh Battlefield, which is in Tennessee. We were fortunate enough for the federal government to help us build the interpretive center there in Corinth. The Battle of Iuka took place. So that one week, we're going to take that whole week as a celebration and the mayor of Farmington tells me there's going to be close to 200,000 or 2,000 reenactors going to convene on the little town of Farmington, very small, two gas stations. Uh, we've got to put them in hotels. We've got to, I mean, we've blocked hotels all over the Plum to Memphis to get them to, in, to be there. And it's going to be, um, and of course, they come on back down to Bryce's Crossroads and their Tupelo, and they fought on down toward Vicksburg. But uh, this should bring in thousands of folks this year for that 150th celebration or anniversary. Well, think of the jobs that are created mm -hmm. with something like that. They have to have transportation, mm -hmm. they have to have food, they have to have lodging. They, this creates a, a wonderful opportunity for people to come and see our state. Well, and the industry uh, accounts for about 32,000 jobs in Mississippi. Exactly. It does. And uh, you no. know the, the Department of Edu of the uh, Tourism Department has put together their logo of Find Your True <laughs> South in Mississippi, mm -hmm. and that's a compass. A compass. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful the way that they've created that. Uh, this would be it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you brought it. I have it right here. This is the latest, the true results, which is available online, and it tells exactly what the economic impact is for travel and tourism in Mississippi. This is something that they sent me, and I've been enjoying looking through it. Uh, it you beautiful. come prepared. Yes, well, I didn't know what you might ask me. I, <laughs> well, we have a Twitter question, in fact, now. We'll uh -oh. see what someone on Twitter is asking us uh, here tonight. Here's the question. Which state sends the most tourists to Mississippi? Interesting question. I know we get a lot of hunters from Louisiana, but do any of you know which state sends the most? I think it's Texas. Really? Yeah, Texas. Well, what, what are they, what are they um, coming for? Uh, for uh, any variety of things, uh, but um, a lot of it is, is uh, our casinos, our hunting and fishing, um, the history. Uh, it's, it's a combination of, of, of things, but I think Texas is, is the number one origin state. And okay. more shows. They come yeah. here from yeah. yeah. Near the Dixon Absolutely. Nationals, yeah. you saw sure. numerous yes. Texas and Oklahoma tags. So mm -hmm. I would say Texas and Oklahoma would be close on the, mm -hmm. on the equine uh, mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I want to put in my plug for the B.B. King Museum. Mm -hmm. Amen. If, oh, yeah. if <laughs> in, anyone has not gone to the B.B. King Museum in Indianola, Mississippi, they should pack up the family of, oh, this weekend and just head to Indianola. That uh, museum, which is about a $16 million investment, that was mostly paid for by the local community. I think the state put in uh, 2 or $3 million in, in the project. But um, it has transformed that community. Hmm. It has become uh, almost an icon of the Mississippi Delta because it's not just about BB. It's not just about blues music. It's about the South. It's about um, a certain period in, in our history. And it's a, it's a wonderful example of how local people can come together and put a real true destination in place in, in a place that might be heretofore considered to be isolated, uh, with not, not a whole lot more to, a lot, lot to see. In the, since that time, they get about 40,000 visitors a year mm -hmm. at that little museum. And uh, they get people from all over the world since that time, uh, several other restaurants have been formed. They're about to build a hotel there. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, so that's a, a, a real good example of how tourism can help create economic development in your community. Well, Senator Horn, aren't the same people who put that B.B. King Museum together the ones who are putting the Grammy Museum together? A lot of the same right. people are involved. Yes. 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 Uh, so it's it should not be the same quality if anything, they do the same be thing. Great That'll quality be in product. Cleveland? Yes. Right. I have one last little thing I'd like to say about uh, what happened up in our district in 2010. The movie The Help mm -hmm. was filmed mostly in Greenwood, Mississippi, right. and also in North Carrollton. If you remember the wonderful scenes between Minnie and Celia, those were at Coatsworth, which is an historic home in North Carrollton, Mississippi. Uh, the people in Greenwood said that, that it just saved them financially. I had restaurant owners to tell me that they might have had to shut shop because we were in an economic <clears throat> recession, but because all the movie people came in 
and uh, spent their money that they, their per diem in the restaurants and everything. It gave the local economy a boost. Uh, even people in Carrollton said it boosted their couple of little restaurants that they had mm -hmm. to, to come. But now we have a new tourism entity. We have people that ride around and want to go to these places where the movie The Help was mm -hmm. filmed. So we're seeing that as a different kind of tourism than we've had in, in Mississippi before. Right. And I think that's a wonderful thing. They've put together a movie trail yes, of that's where right. all these mm -hmm. movies, right. there have been yeah, 19 all, in the last Jackson two years. And Jackson was also Brent's Drug Store right. and Mayflower, yes. I think, were two of the right. local right. establishments. Absolutely. So everybody benefited from that movie and of course we're so proud of uh, Tate Taylor, a Mississippi fellow who mm -hmm. uh, wrote the screenplay and Octavia Spencer who I think got her first job at What a Time to Kill up in Canton. Mm -hmm. Wasn't yes. that they her did. first? They, she said she really uh, credits mm -hmm. them with helping her start and her career. Now she's the Academy Award winning actress right. Octavia Spencer so yes. how, how proud can we be about this? And Brunson Green who was uh, a, a producer of that film. That's uh, right. I uh, went to summer camp with him. Oh, so we've all oh. had our brush with that. <laughs> we, we got a uh, Native son Hudson Hickman, uh, who, if you ever watched uh, The Love Boat mm -hmm. or MacGyver yeah. or The Outer Limits or Stargate, he's the guy who produced that, that product from New Albany, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. And he's back in Mississippi now looking at um, his next project, possibly mm -hmm. filming it here in, in Mississippi in the Florida area. It's well, exciting. Somebody, somebody's got to tell me if Morgan <coughs> Freeman's son is the one doing the commercial about the uh, watching the game on his. On his iPod, did you see that? I, I'm sorry. I oh, I've seen the commercial, son. but I didn't know there when was a connection to Morgan With his Freeman. date, and he's looking, and she's saying, "Are you looking?" <laughs> no, no. And then he mm -hmm. looks down very quickly. Yes. I think it's his son. It really sounds like him. It <laughs> me, looks a lot. Let me like bring him. up a, a point in Pickwick Lake. That's that's what I claim fame to. Uh, <laughs> Thirty bass tournaments a year out of oh, fifty-two man. weeks are yes. launched out of Coleman Park, J.P. Right. Coleman State Park. Astronomical amount of money in the hotels. They buy bait. They buy gas. They buy food. It is a, it's a true savior, like she said, for our area. Uh, J.P. Coleman is, is known, um, you know, all around the world. Of the, the lake shore, 22 miles of lake, sh uh, shoreline, and uh, nice restaurants there. But the bass tournaments, that you're talking the fishing and hunting, it brings them in to fish. They do the uh, Walmart does their, um, I forgot what they call their circuit, but they fish a tournament there every year. Mm. Big bass, uh, big big name bass fishermen come in. And then so you've got the reservoir, and you've got the dragon boat regatta yes. that was mm -hmm. started right. several right. years ago. Well, that's catching Pickwick on. Pickwick Lake. The other interesting thing about oh, Pickwick, Pickwick Lake yeah. is that it has the largest inland marina right. of any place in the United mm -hmm. States. And it's beautiful. Is that right? And it's one beautiful. of the most beautiful sites in Mississippi. Aquayot Marina is the it largest is inland marina in the in the United States. It sure is. I didn't know that. And uh, uh, it's just it's. I mean, it's right there on the Tennessee state line, and you can be sitting here, and uh, you're in Alabama, Tennessee, and Mississippi all at one time. So I'd say y'all are good at selling your district. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be. There you are. That's, that's part of what you're doing. Uh, we have a caller on the line who's been patiently waiting. This is John in Jackson calling with a question. John, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you for uh, taking my call. I heard you all mention about the uh, Coliseum. Has anyone ever thought about uh, making a large enough facility so that you can have indoor, not only all sports, but any sports like a dome, like sort of like the Superdome. That way you not only have uh, sports, but everything. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. You all expressed uh, an interest in improving or perhaps <laughs> building a new <laughs> arena. Senator Horn, what do you envision as, as the ideal facility? If, we were, if, if you got your dream and could build a, a new arena in downtown Jackson, what would it be like? Well, uh, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, I don't know if we would want to take off the table uh, having it serve as a stadium for Jackson State. For football, mm -hmm. uh, for sporting events, for musical events, for equestrian and, and um, uh, rodeo and, and other um, uh, agrarian uh, uh, focused events. I, I, I think you're talking about uh, a facility that's somewhere in, in the 30 to 40,000 range. I think that right now the Coliseum seats are, are just under 10,000. So you're talking, but, but you want something that's adaptable that you could configure into a lot of, of um, uh, configurations to serve the needs of, of whoever is coming. And, and, and to me, the, the question is, uh, make it as adaptable as possible. Mm -hmm. 
and perhaps accommodate all the different activities that, that John McCullough is talking about. There's, there's, the city of Jackson is, is talking about trying to put an arena together in downtown. Uh, so a lot of my friends who are listening to, to, to me now may be cringe and say, no, John, we don't want it. We want it further in, in the downtown to, to keep, create that critical mass. But uh, it, it seems to me that the city, uh, the state, maybe the county, uh, maybe something regional needs to need to sit down and, and have a discussion about about this matter, and maybe even throw in Jackson State University for good measure. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we have another caller on the line. Who, who's the caller? This is Jamie in South Haven. Jamie, go ahead with your question, please. Yes, I'm listening to all of this, and I get real excited about the tourism and people coming to see us. And I am a native Mississippian. And I love our state, and I think we have a beautiful state. But what are you going to do about the litter and trash problem? That is the most embarrassing part to me, when we're going to have a big celebration, and yet we've got all this trash and litter. Are you talking about on interstate highways or where in particular? All the highways, anywhere. I mean, I can take you most anywhere and have... A, on any of our highways, you will have a litter problem unless the highway people have just come through. And I'm not talking about only interstate. I'm talking about other just major roads. Who wants to take a stab at that? Well, I sat on the Keep Mississippi Beautiful um, board for years, and that was a problem that we tried to address in a number of ways. In, in fact, in the past, we've had bills that would give uh, money for a deposit on um, plastic bottles and we never could find a way to get that implemented. Uh, plastic bags or something else that sometimes there was an extra tax added or they attempted to do that never went through because we never could decide that that was the right thing to do or how to implement it. I think Ms. Fordyce said it the best. You know? <laughs> I'm not your mom. I'm not your mom. Your mama. <laughs> I really think, uh, and I agree with the caller, uh, and I, I say that back in my hometown, uh, law enforcement has the tool, the, the penalty that they can charge the folks, but it's hard to catch every single litter. You know, there's so many cars now. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have back home adopt a highway program where mm -hmm. Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts would particular road each day or each once a month. and. But uh, to answer her question, I, I think we're just going to have to to get stiffer with our enforcement of the law. I, th I think so. Well, I think make we a believer out of some educate folks. Educate people mm -hmm. that um, to the 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 uh, good parts That's of keeping right. our our roads um, free of litter. It's just it's it's a problem. It, and uh, I have blown my horn many times when I've seen people throw <laughs> out something <laughs> out the car. I don't know if that does any good. It probably <laughs> makes you feel a little better too. Makes me feel better. I, I, I've got um, an example, uh, an anecdote I'd like to share. S speaking at a local high school, and um, just raise the question because because it really peeves me when I see people littering, mm -hmm. and especially in in, in in their own communities or on the, on the, 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 the public waves. Mm -hmm. uh, and I asked the, the question, "Who thinks it's okay to litter?" And this young lady raised her hand, and she said, "Well, yeah, because." It gives people something to do. Oh, oh my! Like, what did what? you just say? Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, so th that means people should get sick in order to give doctors something to do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but but one of the things that 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 has gone on uh, is that a as budgets have gotten tighter, the Mississippi Department of, of Transportation has slashed its grass cutting budget. Uh, and uh, the, the anti-littering efforts uh, as well, mm -hmm. and are depending more and more on local units of government mm -hmm. to cover that. Mm -hmm. Well, in a place like Jackson, we've got you know s several miles and miles and miles of, of interstate, mm -hmm. of, of highways, and, and the, the policy of, of MDOT is to cut the grass twice a year. Yeah. And they leave it up to the, the local governments to cut it the rest of the year. Well, for someone who's got a small piece of, of, of a highway, that may be okay. But for a city the size of Jackson, uh, it puts a, a heck of a burden back on the city to try to keep the grass cut. And often I, I'm really embarrassed driving through, through Jackson's uh, interstates because mm -hmm. the grass is very, very tall sometimes. And we've got to be very uh, cognizant that 
when people come, it, the, our highways are like our front door. That's right. And mm -hmm. if they're not well maintained and 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 and, and well landscaped, and we, you know, we, we, you know, the, the, the greatest. Interchange uh, in in Mississippi is, is the Madison Interchange. It's beautiful. Uh, it's 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 very manicured. nicely manicured and, and well kept, and I understand that the local government has put a lot of money in, into that. More and more and, money, as yeah. a matter of fact. And and so we, we, you know, but the question is, how do we, for those uh, communities that are more cash strapped, what's the answer to, to that? And and I don't have the answer to it. I really don't. But. I've got one solution, which uh, Corinth just built a regional jail, which is a joint state inmate program with Chris Epps, the commissioner of corrections. And there's 300 inmates housed there. And these are at the security level that they can get out and work into the community. And uh, some advice to the supervisors would be, go get a few of those guys and let's pick up, you know, that, that would be one thing. And, and for every day they work, they get an extra day. You know, it's beneficial for them to get out and work. Well, Bubba, you just you just taken my idea. <laughs> I I, um, I wasn't going to say it, because, but yeah. but now that you mention it, uh, landscaping is a big deal, yeah. and and if you do it and do it well, then you you have an opportunity to to earn money, and to earn income, and a lot of these guys who are are incarcerated need a skill, need an, an opportunity to, I'm not talking about just going and learning how to, how to mow grass, but landscaping is an art. Oh, yeah. It's a real art. And, and uh, an, an idea I'm going to float to MDOT is why don't you, we partner with the Sheriff's Department uh, and, and bring in an, es uh, an expert landscaper oversee. to work with these guys to oversee and, and, and teach them the skill of landscaping. That may be uh, one of the Being solutions. Being in the landscape business, as mm -hmm. we have been all our lives, I agree with you. I think that there's some way that we can use people who are, like my husband, who is retired now, semi-retired, he's still working too, but he, he is very interested in trying to help to give advice and to show, give direction. He and other people mm -hmm. like him would be really good That's great. to That's put good to idea, work John. Like yeah. Well, tell him I might be calling him. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-retired, yeah. Completely changed. Highways. That's a great idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, we have another caller on the line, Virginia, calling from Yazoo County. Virginia, go ahead, please. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Virginia Matthews from Yazoo County, and I am the state equine chair for Farm Bureau. And we would like to work with the state to be uh, make our... Uh, state lands more accessible to horse riders, and we would like any help we could uh, receive from from the legislature to work with us. And I'm really excited about everything y'all have been talking about. Um, I think y'all have some great ideas, and, and we'd just like to help any way we could. Um, okay. But thank you. Thank you. We, we talked about being uh, bike friendly. What about being horse friendly? Well, yeah. it's very interesting that she called in. As uh, Representative Martinson just said, they've got that wonderful uh, horse show that goes on for six weeks and brings over $40 million to the Gulfport Biloxi area. But I was just having a conversation with our new agriculture commissioner yesterday, uh, Cindy Hyde Smith, about uh, agritourism and bringing more horse fanciers, not necessarily the ones with show horses, but people who like to trail ride. Just trail ride. And, and we used and, to do that yeah, all the time. Great opportunities. And as a follow up, I was talking with Dr. Polis, who's the head of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks, saying, Is there any way we can utilize some of our state parks to attract? people who like to trail ride or do mm -hmm. endurance rides and, uh, and so we're working on that so hmm. thank you Virginia for, for <laughs> opening that door for us I we're trying to figure great. out how to make Mississippi a very horse friendly state for folks who want to come and enjoy our beautiful horse trails and uh, perhaps our public lands so that, maybe that these might be available. rails to trails are not just walking or biking that's trails right. can that's be horse right. trails too yeah, that's no, right. and there are also people who like to ride motorcycles mm -hmm. on land that are would be up? available it's <laughs> <laughs> a big industry well, right it's now. A, big yeah. a big industry yeah. mm -hmm. and we, we get quite a few of them when they all congregate here in Jackson uh, once yes. a year you and know the largest the organized wall. bike ride in the United States ends in water Alabama, uh -huh. the Trail uh -huh. of Tears, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's about oh, 10,000 really? motorcycles convened on a one gas station town. Sturgis, over oh, yes, Sturgis. Waterloo, oh, Waterloo, Waterloo, Waterloo. Waterloo. But don't they go through Sturgis, Mississippi as well? Don't they have some yeah, sort they, of thing? They, 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 they have, have a big rally. Name Sturgis yeah. in the yeah. country. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. rally. And yeah. then we have the classic car thing on the coast. Sure do. Mm -hmm. Cruising the coast. It's cruising the coast. Yeah. That well, is a you, wonderful event. Yeah. Since you mentioned the coast and with it being the beginning or summer's right around the corner now that we've got spring break behind us, uh, the coast has had some hard times with uh, Katrina and then the oil spill. 
uh, if, if Katrina wasn't enough. Um, I, I know none of you live on the coast, but is the coast, uh, how, how quickly is it coming back and what can, what can be done from your perspective on the tourism committees to help promote further uh, redevelopment on the coast? Well, funny thing you asked today, <laughs> this mm -hmm. morning, yes? <laughs> we had a presentation from a group who would like to create a maritime museum. Hmm. on the coast mm -hmm. and they are looking at um, trying to put something together where they would have a building to first start out with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know we've how many 11? 11? Naval ships. Naval ships. Mm -hmm. were, oh I should have brought that. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. I me forgot to say that. It's ships. just phenomenal. The oh number it of was ships. huge. The number of, and, and the Mississippi the is yes, going to be commissioned on June 2nd. Mm -hmm. And so, so um, there are a lot of things going on on the coast. They are coming back. Um, and they've built their seafood museum mm -hmm. in Gulfport, in Biloxi, and it's, from all I've Had told, some fresh shrimp really. prior to coming over here. DMR cooked some shrimp, and I didn't taste any oil in it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we've got I past think we don't that part of it. Talking to, our, uh, talking to our fellow colleagues from the coast, I understand that it was more blew up by the media versus how bad it, it actually, it hurt. The tourism was affected by the media basically saying, don't come here, don't come here. But I think they've had a real good cleanup. Mm -hmm. uh, BP is in response, gave some money for advertising mm -hmm. to get folks back to come to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, they're not back at full potential, but I think they're they're they're, back, they're on their way back. That's right. It has to be encouraging when things like this museum, when, yes. when folks come forward yeah. and say, "We want to do this yeah. here. We're we're not concerned about yeah. about what has happened." Yeah. They've been, they've been Look at Infinity. Years, yeah. Infinity is about to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be open. huge. That's going to be on the west side of the Mississippi coast, and they would like this maritime museum then to be developed to sort of anchor east. to the east side. That's a museum about the space program in Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, as I said, you are great promoters of, of your districts, <laughs> which all are all part of this state, and we appreciate you all for being on tonight. And uh, it does it's exciting to talk about what could be uh, and what already is in Mississippi and how right. to promote it to the rest of the world. Thank we thank you, thank you all for Thanks, Wilson. We enjoyed being, being with you. Thank we you. appreciate it. And we thank you for joining us as always. And we'll be back next Wednesday night at 7 with another edition of Quorum. I'm Wilson Stripling. Good night.